Welcome to Coffee with TMEs, where we talk to Cisco's technical marketing engineers about the products and innovations that they're working on. I'm Jeff McLaughlin, Director of Technical Marketing here at Cisco, and I have a very special guest with me today, Krishnan Thiravengadam, who works on security policy and is an expert on endpoint analytics. Uh, welcome, Krishnan. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got to be a TME? Thank you very much for inviting Jeff. Uh, it's a pleasure being in this uh, meeting. Uh, I've been with Cisco for around uh, 15 years now, and uh, the first 10 years I spent my time in engineering uh, and QA organization. I was leading the effort uh, on NAC and SQL on solution and things like that. Past five years, and I've been uh, a TME, and it's been a pleasure since then. So. Um, past a uh, couple of years and I've been working with endpoint analytics and I'm a, a subject matter expert for endpoint analytics and uh, as well as ICE. So um, that's my brief background. Great. Well, welcome Krishnan again. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, this is really an interesting subject and as I've been thinking about endpoint analytics, and you know, I'm an old school network engineer, Krishnan, and uh, you know, we've had technologies like 802.1x for a long time, where you know, I plug my laptop into the network or maybe connect to wireless, and uh, I'm able to identify myself, right? You know, I, I uh, pass maybe my credentials to Active Directory, and as a part of that, you know, the switch uses Radius to talk to something like Identity Services Engine, and we can figure out who this user is and apply the appropriate security policy. Um, so I know that, that we've had technologies like that for a while. Um, what do we need endpoint analytics for? Can't we just rely on something like 802.1x to tell us what the devices are on our network? So if you think about what 802.1x offers, right? it's, a, it's a means of authenticating a user. Right? And it also requires a software on the endpoint. Uh, software we call that as a supplicant that starts the authentication. The user has to supply their credentials, the username, passwords, right? And uh, the end result is uh, your authentication is successful. As a result, you will gain access, and that we call that's what we call authorization. Now, if you think about endpoints, and these are these could be managed endpoints as well as unmanaged endpoints. Managed endpoints are laptop, mobile devices that IT manages usually. There are a lot of unmanaged endpoints in our environment. You will have no idea what these are unless you encounter them on a daily basis. Think about it, right? Like before COVID and as we enter into the building, um, you'll see the cameras. And then as you enter, there, there's a bath reader that opens up the door and you enter. The building, the, and you take the elevator, the elevator could be an IoT device, and uh, the temperature sensor, and that actually controls the inside uh, temperature. And then you go and um, attend your conference, WebEx meetings, the, the teleconferencing unit, and that could be an IoT device as well. And then you go take a break, uh, go to a, a coffee room, and your coffee machine could be an IoT device as well. So. On a daily basis, we encounter uh, lots and lots of IoT devices, and these are unmanaged. They don't authenticate to the network. So how do you identify these IoT devices? That's the first challenge. The second is these IoT devices, if not identified, becomes a big challenge for security organizations because these are unmanaged devices. Primarily, security organizations are concerned about applications, uh, endpoints, especially unmanaged endpoints. So they wanted to be able to classify these endpoints nicely and segment them so that they can apply the right set of policies. So we have, uh, as you mentioned, this explosion of IoT devices on the network. Uh, and so that's one motivation. They, they don't run 802.1x supplicants typically, right? You, you can't just expect them to. And a lot of times you may not have that kind of control where, you know, you're managing your corporate fleet of laptops. You know, you may not have the option to, to install supplicants or software like that on those, um, those endpoints. And I suppose also, you know, I mean, you and I have both worked with, for example, healthcare institutions where, um, you know, they have 
they have medical devices on their network and sometimes they're running you know ancient software on them and again it's it's the kind of thing where you don't really go and update them all the time and put the latest patches and so managing them from a software perspective is challenging and so you know you need some other way to identify them without basically having to mandate putting software on their devices uh, so would you say that endpoint analytics is more of a, of a passive means of identifying uh, devices and what they are, whereas like 802.1x is more of an active means of doing it? Would that be a fair classification? So you actually bring up two good points. One is verticals, right? Um, I talked about uh, cameras, and, uh, uh, elevators, temperature sensors, and these are building management uh, devices, if you may call and there are also smart buildings, and uh, Endpoint Analytics supports that as well. And that is something new uh, and promising in the future because of COVID. And as people come out of COVID and enter into this new era where they wanted to track people uh, inside, and uh, you can do it using different softwares, DNA spaces being one, uh, smart buildings become important. So you wanted to identify things that are happening in this uh, smart building. and. Uh, and you wanted to identify these IoT devices as well. And other aspect you brought up is that the healthcare environment. Healthcare environment is, has a plethora of uh, IoT devices. Imagine you are MRI machines, you are ultrasound, infusion pumps, and you have lots and lots of infusion pumps everywhere in your in healthcare environment. So all of these devices talk to only certain entities. So you want to be able to identify them passively and that brings in uh, to your second point you don't want to be active intrusive you know doing a scan and, and identifying these devices because some of these devices are very sensitive devices and they don't have a lot of cpu power right so you want to passively monitor these devices sitting in the network quietly and identify these asset information now, uh, that brings up another point that comes to mind. I've seen some of your Cisco Live presentations, uh, Krishnan, actually quite a few. I've been in the room for some of them. And you used to do one on a protocol called MUD, uh, Manufacturer Usage Detection, I think it was. Usage description. And, oh, usage, what was that? Manufacturer Usage Description. Description. Okay, so I, I had it slightly off. Um, but again, isn't that a protocol that's aimed at IoT devices and identifying IoT devices? Uh, and, you know, again, how, how would that compare with, with endpoint analytics? And why not use MUD, I suppose, is my question. Yeah. Um, so if you think about MUD, right, MUD is not a passively monitoring protocol. MUD doesn't sit in the network layer. So what MUD offers is a solution. So solution starts with an endpoint advertising itself to the network, saying that, hey, I am a coffee machine. Hey, I am a light bulb, right? So that comes from the IoT device itself. So it takes a little effort to embed this announcement or advertisement in certain protocols such as LLDP, DHCP, and all that. And there is a specification on that. Now, the other aspect is that once this advertisement is sent to the network, the network should be able to consume it and then create profiles automatically. That's where Identity Services Engine plays a key role. So the Identity Services Engine gleans the information out of this protocols and automatically creates profiles. So that is the profiling aspect. The third aspect is that like th these announcements will have a URL and the URL will have the manufacturer model embedded in that. Now, <clears throat> ICE should technically go to that URL where they host a web server and that has policy definitions and that gets downloaded to ICE and the policies are implemented. This is the MUD architecture. Now, by MUD also requires adoption because this is a whole architecture, right? And uh, you know, I've heard uh, from a lot of manufacturers um, and from the mud architects that it is being adopted. Now we are getting into a chicken and egg problem here. And also these things require a little amount of development effort on 
the IoT vendor side to embed these uh, this URL in a certain set of pro protocol. And it requires effort on the I side uh, in profiling as well as getting that policy, policy uh, definitions. Now, this is, this, this is an architecture. Now, endpoint analytics is a passive monitoring solution where you embed these sensors in the network infrastructure itself. Say, for example, if you have Catalyst 92, 9300s, 9400s as well. Now, these sensors are embedded in the infrastructure and it listens to your application protocols and it cleans information out of these application protocols. And um, remember, these IoT devices to a large part use unencrypted protocols, so it is easy to glean this information out of these protocols as well. Well, that addressed one question I was going to ask, which was, uh, you know, so much traffic seems to be encrypted nowadays. So it's interesting that the IoT devices do use, uh, tend to use unencrypted protocols, so that makes it easier. So I guess um, going back to what you were saying and, and you know, the conversation about MUD, it, it's kind of, there's A, an adoption issue, you know, not, it hasn't been that widely adopted yet, or maybe not enough to be completely reliable. And then also, it's still an active technology like 802.1x, whereas endpoint analytics, you're saying, is is passive. Um, and I think you mentioned the architecture of, of EA a little bit, but before we get into it, there's one other question that I had for you, because you brought up ICE profiling, and uh, you know we've had profiling for a while. Uh, so you know endpoint analytics sounds kind of like profiling, and I guess what are what are the differences or the advantages of endpoint analytics? Uh, over a traditional profiling? Yeah, this is a question I've been asked a lot of times by uh, you know, sales folks and customers and all that. Because ICE to a large part, and it does profiling, right? ICE is very good in profiling IT endpoints. Say, for example, you have mobile devices, laptops, printers, and all that. Right? It uses certain set of IT protocols. For example, it uses DHCP, um, it uses uh, SNMP, it uses RADIUS, it uses a few set of uh, IT-based protocols, right? Now, if you think about IoT devices, you mentioned healthcare, they don't talk IT protocols, and they don't send asset information via IT protocols. These healthcare uh, devices, for example, the MRI scanner I talked about, they use something called DICOM protocol. And the backend PAX server, PAX stands for Picture Archival Server System. Now, they, it is used for retrieving images. So they use something called HL7 for storing and retrieving um, patient data. So the idea is that like we should be able to have a technology that understands a variety of protocols, and that's where NBAR comes into play. NBAR has been around, as you know, for a long time, right? NBAR has been used for application visibility. Now we have repurposed, tweaked NBAR a little bit so that it can gather, it can, uh, gather endpoint asset information as well. Now, uh, you're right about NBAR. I remember NBAR was on my CCIE exam back in 2004, if you can believe it. Uh, and I think we used it back then just to identify applications and set QoS policies. I think, I think that was all we did with it. Um, but this is an evolution, I guess, of that same technology that I was working with all the way back in 2004, right? Absolutely. So it can identify more protocols, I suppose, and do it better? NBAR right now, they, they call it NBAR2, uh, advanced NBAR, whatever they call it, right? And, uh, but the idea is that like, it has the capability of identifying around 1,400 different protocols. Right? That includes DICOM, HL7. It also includes building automation protocols such as BACnet and, and, th and things like that. Now, uh, going back to ICE, ICE has a set of protocols, for 12 to 14 pro pro protocols that it uses to uh, clean asset information. But ICE is also very good in gathering information from the backend servers. 
So imagine like, you know, you have the Active Directory, you have MDM server, MDM stand, standing for mobile device management, right? These have tons of information, endpoint information, right? And a passive monitoring tool sitting in front of the IoT device may not know all these. So that's where ICE plays a very key role in augmenting endpoint attributes uh, beyond what endpoint analytics is capable of. So endpoint analytics uh, can glean around 1400 different, uh, uh, can understand 1400 different uh, protocols and glean information for, from that. And ICE would augment information from Active Directory, MDM, AnyConnect, and so on. Now, when you talk about endpoint analytics, there's this AI ML aspect to it, right? Which is another thing that I don't think ICE uh, had. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit more about how the, the AI ML works? I mean, that's a buzzword we hear a lot nowadays. What What is uh, EA's usage of those technologies? Yeah, yeah. So um, to go back, right, like endpoint analytics, the, the main goal of endpoint analytics is that like you want to be able to identify and profile these devices using four labels, endpoint type, manufacturer, model, operating system. That said, it uses a couple of different ways to identify that. And one is using deep packet inspection. That's where NBAR comes into play. See, uh, I call it, uh, I call NBAR as uh, uh, embedded sensor on the network, right? It is embedded in Cat9K. So if you do not have Cat9Ks, then we have something called Cisco Traffic Telemetry Appliance. And you can use that to pipe the traffic to that appliance and that appliance will do profiling for you. So okay, so we can do endpoint analytics even if we don't have Cat Nine K using this traffic telemetry appliance. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay, because I was going to ask that seemed like a limitation, but we have a way to help you out right. in that case. Great. Yes, endpoint analytics supports both wired, wireless. For wireless, we support ninety eight hundred wireless controllers. So what happens if you don't have it? Then we need it. We have a solution with Cisco traffic telemetry appliance. Okay. Now that is the DPI part of it. Right. The DPI plays a key role in identifying application protocols and gleaning asset information, and it sends it to Cisco DNA Center. Now, Endpoint Analytics is an application that sits in Cisco DNA Center. Now, the second aspect we talked about is the AIML. So, how is AIML used? Now, there are two use cases I wanted to bring about. One is it is used to intuitively group, the, group these endpoints based on common set of attributes and behavior. Now, what do I mean by that? You want to identify 90 to 95% of the endpoints and devices using DPI or using uh, other sets of probes. Now, what happens if, to the rest five or 10% endpoints, and that could be critical to your environment as well, right? So that's where AI ML comes into play. So it gathers endpoint information from all the different sources, and it groups intuitively. That's what we call clusters. And the, these clusters are visible to admins in the form of a nice UI. So once the admin knows the cluster, they can see the endpoint attributes and they will know what it is uh, in their mind and they can label it quickly. So that is one use case, right? Now the second use case is that we are trying to solve another problem that has been there for quite some time, right? We want to avoid people using unauthorized devices doing impersonation attempts and gaining access using Mac spoofing, things like that, right? So the way we are doing it is using AI. So we wanted to capture the behavior of these endpoints from NetFlow and send it to AI and AI creates models and it downloads these models, updates these models at regular intervals. And this is across all different endpoint types. Mm. Now, if an attacker or a bad guy 
tries to impersonate using Mac spoofing or proof spoofing. Then he wanted to uh, connect to the uh, wired network. And he, when he does that, and once he starts generating traffic, this traffic behavior is compared with the model. And if there is any deviation, the deviation will be identified and an event would be triggered. And that would be an anomaly event. Yeah, okay. Right. So that's how the, uh, the spoofing attempt is detected. And we use identity services engine to mitigate uh, and to block this uh, endpoint and to kick the bad guy out. So I want to go back to the first use case you mentioned because um, there was a question that came up when you were talking about it. Um, and I, I know you've got a slide that you're going to show later, which has the different components of, uh, of this solution. But you'd mentioned DNAC as one component and uh, also the Cat9K or possibly the, the traffic telemetry appliance as another component of the system. So with, with the AI ML, does this mean that, um, so we're collecting this information through deep packet inspection. Uh, does some of the classification happen on DNAC locally? It's just capable of, of doing that. But then if, if we can't identify a particular endpoint, then we go to the cloud or does it always go to the cloud? That was one point I wasn't quite clear on. No. Uh, yes, that is, that's how it works. The first thing is uh, how it, uh, it's the former. Right. Uh, we wanted to be able to identify a lot of endpoints, most of your endpoints, using deep packet inspection. There will still be unknowns in your environment where deep packet inspection um, may not have enough profiling rules to categorize and label these uh, endpoints. So for those type of endpoints, say for example, you connect uh, from a stat, right? And uh, you know you connect a series of thermostats across your environment, right? and then uh, it starts sending traffic. And using AI, you can immediately cluster these endpoints, right? And these are new thermostats, and that may not have profiling rules available, right? And once you see this cluster, admin can label these thermostats as residual thermostats or whatever the manufacturer is. And then they can assign policies. So the goal is for us to segment these IoT devices as quickly as possible. So these things are tools, the DPI, AI, uh, AI uh, ML grouping are tools to identify and label these endpoints so, so that you can go about doing your task of segmenting these IoT devices nicely. Right. I, okay. So that's interesting. And it seems like one of the big advantages over uh, profiling there would be profiling is very much static. I mean, we have to build those profiles that are used to identify these endpoints, whereas this is able um, to classify endpoints maybe, I guess, more dynamically is, is how I see it. Yes, and we call it multi-factor classification, so it can uh, dynamically understand uh, these attributes and uh, classify them based on uh, what the attributes say. It could say, say for example, in, in the case of DICOM, I spoke about, and we glean this uh, information out of these, uh, out of specific attributes from DICOM itself, right? and then we help label uh, these endpoints automatically in DNA Center. Great. Well, this sounds great, uh, Krishnan, and I, I think uh, maybe it would be good to pull up the slide now and we can look at the, uh, the architecture of the system and dive into that a little bit more because we've gotten into a few of the components here discussing it, but as you know, pictures help to clarify everything, right? Yeah, pictures worth a thousand words, that's what they say, right? At least a thousand. Yeah. So let me share my screen. Okay, Krishnan, so I do see the slide, and uh, so I can see DNAC and ICE and uh, CAT9K, so kind of what we've been talking about, but why don't you uh, walk me through what's going on here? Yeah, so uh, let's look at the, the flow, um, the workflow of what happens in, uh, when you uh, profile the endpoints and when you want to segment these endpoints with nice access policy and all that, right? So, ima uh, so the, imagine like you have endpoints to your left, 
and you have these uh, MRI machines, you have cameras, IP phones, and all that. And these machines send information over to the network, connect to the network first, right? That would be the first step. So when they connect, right, they can either use 802.1x as in the case of managed endpoints, or they could just send out their MAC addresses and when they are connecting to the network. Now the network uses this MAC addresses and sends it to ICE and ICE quickly sends the initial set of policies um, to either uh, allow them quick access to key resources, say DHCP, DNS, and things like that. Right? Now, at this point, um, the embedded sensor kicks in and it starts cleaning application information. Now, the more if the policy is open, right, it'll gather more application information, and this information is sent to DNAC, as you can see. And the endpoint analytics will profile the endpoints, assign labels automatically, and sends this information over to ICE. Once it goes to ICE, ICE will assign the final set of policy over to uh, endpoint analytics, allowing the right level of access for each set of endpoints. So endpoint visibility comes first, followed by policy. A couple of questions come to mind here. So first of all, the deep packet inspection um, that you've been talking about, that happens obviously on the Cat9K itself. Um, that's doing the deep packet inspection, right? Yes. And then when the Cat9K does that, what is it actually sending to DNAC? Is it, it's not sending that raw traffic stream, I assume. It's sending some sort of a summary of what it saw, or uh, it's performing some kind of analysis itself and then sending metadata to DNAC? Like, like what is that uh, transaction there between the Cat9K and the DNAC? Yeah, you, you said it right. So it sends the summary of endpoint metadata that it gathers using different protocols. Say, for example, uh, the endpoint starts sending DHCP traffic. So it looks at the, the DHCP and there is something called DHCP classifier ID, right? And uh, it uses that and it tries to get some information initially. And then once it creates a nice set of tables, it, 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 it builds table, right? Based on application, protocol, source, destination, uh, ports, uh, IP addresses and all that. And then once it creates a table, of these uh, protocols and protocol and asset identifiers, then this is sent over to endpoint analytics. And this is sent very frequently, as and when it gets new information, new flow information, it's sent to endpoint analytics. And endpoint analytics will, um, will use these profiling rules I spoke about, right, to create these labels and send this over to uh, ICE. I see, that makes sense. And then from ICE, we can apply whatever policy I guess we want. We could apply SGTs to different um, devices that we've identified or apply uh, whatever kind of uh, security policy we need at that point on ICE. Yes, you can. Uh, you wanted to apply, uh, if you are looking at micro segmentation, you wanted to apply uh, SGTs. And uh, there are ways and means of doing macro, micro segmentation, whatever you call it. You can do VLANs as well. Like if you are still uh, transitioning over from VLAN-based network over to SDA network, and you can do that. Uh, it supports ACLs. It, it supports different ways of authorizing the endpoint. Okay. And ICE could probably, I assume, uh, build policy based on any one or combination of those different classifiers that it receives. So we're receiving the four ty endpoint type manufacturer model and operating system. We could use one or, or, or a combination, right, in building our policy. Yes, correct. So you could use one or multiple. And you can also use in tandem with other attributes that you wanted to use in, in case if, if the attributes are coming from ICE itself, right, and unique set of uh, attributes, and you can, you, can, you can do that. In fact, uh, say, for example, if you have these uh, endpoints, uh, specific type of IoT devices and that are registered in ServiceNow, you can de you can get that attributes from ServiceNow, and we have an integration with ServiceNow, where Endpoint Analytics can receive this information from um, ServiceNow, and it uses you can use custom rules in Endpoint Analytics 
to assign uh, different sets of labels based on what the device owner knows about this specific type of endpoint. The reason why I'm saying this is, right, like an iPhone could have an application and you could use this iPhone for any, uh, any purposes, the iPad, for example, right? And uh, in healthcare environment, these iPads will have application, you know, where nurses would use, where doctors would use. So the usage of these devices could vary. So you could uh, tune in the uh, endpoint type based on those usages. So we touched on it a bit with ICE, I think, Christian, but you know, we have this visibility element. So we're seeing what the devices are, we're seeing the type, manufacturer, OS, et cetera. Um, but what's the end goal of this visibility? I mean, it's one thing just to see what a device is. What can we actually do with that? Right. So if you think about uh, why do we want to uh, make these endpoints visible, the end goal is segmentation. Right. So it starts with visibility. You have endpoints nicely identified, profiled, and then you want to apply the right set of policies. And then you want to also understand the flows. Right. And there is a separate piece of application that actually identifies the flows and creates segmentation policy. And the segmentation policy, when, when I say segmentation policy, it kind of defines who talks to what based on these flows intuitively. Right, so the goal of this is to nicely identify the endpoints and protect them from harm's way. So the first step would be visibility, the second is policy from ICE, and the third is the actual segmentation policy that prevents or allows access only to certain set of resources. A camera needs to talk to a storage server, not internet. A uh, MRI machine needs to talk to a PAC server and maybe another resource, not anything else. So we need to nicely identify these flows and create segmentation policies for that. And, you know, we had talked about healthcare earlier, which is, you know, one of the great use cases, certainly not the only one for this, but, you know, you think about in a healthcare environment, if your CT scanner is going out, like you said, and talking to who knows what on the internet, um, that device could be corrupted and potentially end up offline. So there are life-saving consequences in many industries to getting this right. Uh, and if you don't get it right, you know, your, your devices could be compromised and uh, there could be pretty bad consequences. So uh, this is a very, very important technology and it's something we really need to get right uh, for a number of reasons. Absolutely. And uh, uh, this is a classic example, like I always bring up, right? Like uh, in the, even in the uh, last meeting, I, I brought this up. A few years back, uh, a fish tank was hacked in a casino. That's why, that's how the bad guys came in, uh, entered into the uh, casino uh, before hacking into their uh, network and uh, gathering uh, information. And, uh, so a fish tank is an IoT device, right? The same way all these devices, unmanaged uh, uh, devices, are not patched and they are vulnerable. So it is very important to identify them and protect them. A fish tank. I never would have expected a fish tank to be connected to a network, but I guess, like you mentioned, not just CT scanners, but coffee machines, fish tanks. I'd like to see, does that actually show up in endpoint analytics? Does it identify it as a fish type, fish tank <laughs> for device type? Yeah, if it, if fish tank can talk, yes, it'll identify that as a fish <laughs> tank. <laughs> all right, so secure your fish tanks, coffee machines, CT, CT scanners, and all the other devices on your network with uh, endpoint analytics. Well, uh, well, Christian, thank you very much for your time. This was uh, extremely informative, and uh, it looks like this is uh, a really important and promising new technology that, uh, that you're working on here. My pleasure, Jeff. It's always great to talk to you and uh, provide information about uh, endpoint, uh, endpoint analytics, and that's close to my heart. And mine as well, and hopefully uh, our listeners now that they know what it is. So... Once again, thank you, Krishnan, for uh, coming on Coffee with TMEs, and uh, I'll see you all next time when I continue talking with Cisco's technical marketing engineers about the products and innovations that they're working on 
Thanks for tuning in.